Hey, Dr. Osborne back with Web Wellness University. And today, this is part two of the functional medicine approach to regulating blood sugar. So if you've got hypoglycemia, or you're pre-diabetic, or you've got blood sugar problems, or you have diabetes, you wanna make sure that you go back and review part one of this video before we get into this particular section. Now, let's get started. Last time we talked about food's impact on blood sugar, we talked about the nutritional impact on blood sugar. We said that you know, food breaks down into glucose and then that glucose in your bloodstream has to trigger for your pancreas to produce insulin. And that requires vitamin D and it also requires zinc and magnesium. We then said that for that insulin to communicate with your cell, that required a couple of other nutrients, chromium, a mineral, and vitamin B3, also known as niacin. And we said that in order for, there's a, once that chromium or once that insulin receptor is activated, it sends a message through the cell and opens a doorway in the cell that allows that sugar, that glucose, to come into your cell. And this is how we make energy. So this is, you know, when we think about how we're fatigued or how we have ups and downs in our blood sugar, one of the reasons why is this total overall pathway is not working properly. So last time we talked about all these different nutritional elements that are related to making this pathway work properly. Today I want to talk about how some of the medications that you might have been prescribed or you might be currently taking can actually influence this pathway in a way long term that creates a secondary detriment to your nutritional status. So one of the most primary drugs used to prescribe to control blood sugar are basically gluten sensitizing drugs called metformin or glucophage. Now these drugs are known to block coenzyme Q10, folate, which is a B vitamin, vitamin B9, as well as vitamin B12. So here we have one class of drug that's used to treat blood sugar problems and the drug itself works well. It doesn't solve the problem, but it does work decently well at bringing blood sugar down. But the problem with it is long term we create deficiencies in these three nutrients. If you come back and, and you recall the diagram that we talked about last time, CoQ10 is one of the major steps or one of the necessary nutrients in order for your body to be able to process and finalize the production of energy and regulation of blood sugar. So are the B vitamins. So if we're taking a drug long term that's blocking these particular nutrients, we're going to end up long term with difficulties regulating that blood sugar. This is a lot of times why a diabetic patient initially will go on a medication and as a year goes by they increase the dose or they may add another medication or eventually become insulin dependent. And so this is what we're trying to avoid. So remember the first class of medication, the ones that actually lower blood sugar, inhibit or block these main nutrients and these main nutrients have an impact on this cycle. Now, some of the other drugs that are commonly used in patients with diabetes, cholesterol lowering drugs, right? Because there are some new recommendations that say anybody with high cholesterol needs to be on, or anybody with diabetes rather needs to be on a statin drug or cholesterol lowering drug. Now, cholesterol reducing meds interfere with vitamin D and they are known to block CoQ10 as well. So now we've introduced a second drug or a second medication that affects or inhibits the CoQ10 uh, and CoQ10 its main and one of its primary functions is, is again in the regulation of energy from the glucose as we get it into the cell but then we also talked about vitamin D and remember what we said about vitamin D in order for your glucose to be able to signal your pancreas to make insulin you require vitamin D so if we're on these drugs for any length of time, we start to get vitamin D loss, we start to get CoQ10 loss. And this is one of the reasons why these drugs are linked to lethargy, lower energy. They can cause muscle weakness over time. It doesn't happen overnight. It's, it typically takes a few years for, for these mechanisms to start fully kicking in and creating major problems for patients. And that's the problem is that because it takes such a long time for the problem to manifest, many people on these drugs never go back and associate the use of those drugs with the problems and the symptoms that they're developing as a result of the side effects or the nutritional consequences. So we've got blood pressure lowering drugs, we've got cholesterol lowering drugs, and then the other class of drug that's commonly used or the other type of medication that's commonly used in patients that have blood sugar problems all have to do with blood pressure. Right, because what we're trying to do, what doctors, cardiologists typically try to do is reduce the risk factors involved with cardiovascular disease, diabetes. So the blood pressure meds will block 
many of the different B vitamins, but B1 is one of the main ones. We also know that many of these drugs will inhibit or interfere with vitamin B12. We also know that they inhibit or interfere with CoQ10, right? So do you see the trend? We're looking, we're seeing that CoQ10 now for the third time, but also B1 and B12 in this particular scenario. But also magnesium and potassium, okay? And some of them interfere with calcium. So now we go back and we look at this diagram again. Remember what we talked about with magnesium. Magnesium was necessary to produce insulin. Magnesium was necessary to bring about energy production, right? Remember we said there are 16 different biochemical steps. Eight of them require magnesium. And then we've got potassium. Potassium being an electrolyte that helps regulate how the heart conductivity occurs, but also the, the vascular tone. And then calcium. We said that calcium was responsible for allowing that message to open the glucose door within the cell to allow the glucose to come into the cell. So again, if we look at the different medications that are designed and used to facilitate or reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease, we can see that nutritionally, they're actually over the long haul going to create more nutritional problems that lead to energy deficit states that cause lethargy, that cause muscle loss, that cause the inability to exercise because there's not enough energy to be able to do so. That's why many of these medications cause fatigue. So what does all this mean for you? What this means is if you're on any of those types of medications and you've got this blood sugar dysregularity, you need to go to your doctor and you need to have this conversation about functional medicine approach. You need to have this conversation about how these drugs, how you've learned these drugs can influence and interfere with the nutrients or the B vitamins and the minerals that are necessary to prevent diabetes in the first place. And that way, you're going to be taking a more holistic approach and you're going to have a much more successful outcome than just trying to regulate the blood sugar artificially with the use of medications. Remember, you don't have a blood sugar problem because you have a medication deficiency. Typically, you have a blood sugar problem because of some of the issues that we've talked about in the last two videos. Go back and watch part one if you haven't because it goes into much greater detail about the nutritional parameters and aspects of this. Now, one more note before uh, we tune out today, and that is what makes this pathway work better even than taking large quantities of supplements, okay, to prime these different chemical reactions. The number one component or, or the main component that's going to help this pathway that's going to influence it, that's going to allow it to work better is exercise. Now, a lot of people are like, well, how do I exercise when I'm tired all the time? I don't even have the energy to get up and do what I'm supposed to do in a day. You have to introduce it at some point, so there's no time like the present. Now, that doesn't mean you need to go out and try to run a marathon or, or try to train uh, like an Olympian, but you have to start looking at implementing exercise a little bit more aggressively in your life. And we'll talk more about that in a later video. But I want you to walk away knowing that don't just go to the supplement store and buy a bunch of supplements and think that this problem is going to go away if you're not also addressing exercise, if you're not also addressing your diet. Those are two other key components, key elements to regulating your blood sugar, to normalizing your blood sugar using a functional medicine approach. If you haven't subscribed, Go ahead and click down below and subscribe to my future updates so that you can stay educated and updated on all the functional medicine.